Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 to 15. Matthew chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end to, of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. And blind receive their sight, and lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to the dumb. And blessed is he, whoever shall not be offended in me. As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what? When ye out for to see a man clothed in soft remnant, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, a yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I sent my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesies until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market, and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He had a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous, and a wine a beer, a friend of publican and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Woe to unrepentant city! Then began he to upbraid the city, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Corazon! Woe unto thee, Barsada! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon. They were have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And though Capernaum, which art exalted into unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Come to me and I will give you rest. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast 
revealed them into babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me from of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he too, whoever, whomever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Chapter 12 Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, have ye not read what David did when he was hungered, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God, and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. For the priests? Or have ye not read in the law? how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meant, I will have mercy and not sacrificed. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day, a man with a withered hand. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his had withered. And they asked him, saying, It is lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you, that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will not he lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well in the sab on the Sabbath days. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored, behold, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him, God's chosen servant. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall not break, and smoking flax shall not quench till he sent forth judgment into, unto victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisee heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, 
Every kingdom divided itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathered not with me scattered abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. A tree is known by its fruit. Either make the tree good, his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. The sign of Jonah. Then certain, uh, then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we should see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they reported at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Return of an unclean spirit. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth empty, swept, and garnished. Then go with ye, and take it with himself, seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in the and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Jesus' mother and brothers, while he yet, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother, and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Chapter 13 The Parable of the Sower The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. 
and the great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went <coughs> into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude of multitude stood on the shore. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth and to sow. And then, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and for, forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns. The thorns sprung up and choked them. But the other fell into good ground, because for its fruit some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who had ears to hear, let them hear. The purpose of the per parables. And the disciples came and said unto them, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whoever I had to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever had not from him shall be taken away even that he had. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and ye shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest any time they sh should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Blessed, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. The parable of the sower explained. Hear the fair, therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heard it, the word of the kingdom, and understand it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catch it away what which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and Anon with joy receives it. Yet had it he not rooted himself, but dured for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by, by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choked the word, and he became unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understand it, which also beareth fruit, and bring forth some and hundred, some sixty, some thirty. The Parable of the Weeds Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which soweth, which sowed good seed 
in his field. But when but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field, from whence then had it tares? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while he gather up the tares, he root up also the wheat with them, that both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest. I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bindles to burn, them, but gather the wheat on into my barn, the mustard seed and the leaven. Another parable put me forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and become it a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in their branches thereof. Another parable spoke he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, until the whole world was leavened. Prophecy and parables. All these things spoke Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spoke he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. The parable of the weeds explained. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto them, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed of the Son of Man, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and offend and done which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun of the kingdom of their father. Who had ears to hear, let them hear. The parable of the hidden treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in the field, the, with the which when a man had found, he hid it. For joy, thereof go it and sell it all that he had, and buy it that field. The parable of the peril of great value. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking God goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great place, price, great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The parable of the net. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast unto the sea and gathered every kind, which when it was full, they drew to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bat away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
new and the old treasures. Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things old and new. Jesus rejected a Nazareth. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James, Joseph, and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? When then this man all these things, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Matthew chapter 14, the death of John the Baptist. At the same time, Herod and the Tetrad heard of, of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herod Dias, sake his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Her Herod Dias danced before him, dumb, and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she would ask, whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a, char in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with them at me, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel and she brought it to her mother and his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus Jesus feeds the 5,000 when Jesus heard of it he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart and when the people had heard thereof they followed him on foot out of the cities and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude that was moved with compassion toward him, done. and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Sent the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the five fish, two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five 
6,000 men beside women and children. Jesus walks on water, and straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him into the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he sent, had sent the multitudes away, he ran up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, where the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind blustering, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Jesus heals the sick of the, in the Granesaret. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Granesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the contrary country, all the country, that country round about, and brought unto him all that were diseased, and besought him that they might only watch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Matthew chapter 15 traditions and commandments. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father and his mother, or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profit, profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Esaias prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teach, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. What defiles a person? And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defile the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defile the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended, after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly, 
and is cast out into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeded, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defiled not a man. The fate of a Canaanite woman. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, O son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. But his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith but it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from the very hour. Jesus heals many. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And the great multitudes came unto him, having, having them having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. And so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed, maimed, maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus feeds the 4,000. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus said unto them, How many loaves ha have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and fishes and gave thanks and broke them, and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they, that, and they that did eat were four thousand men beside women and children. And he sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdalia. The Gospel according to Matthew. It's one of the earliest official accounts about Jesus of Nazareth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. The book itself is anonymous, but the earliest reliable tradition links it to Matthew the tax collector, who was one of the twelve apostles that Jesus appointed, and he actually appears within the book itself. For about 30 to 40 years, the apostles orally taught and passed on their eyewitness accounts about Jesus, along with his teachings that they had all memorized. And Matthew has then collected and arranged all these into this amazing tapestry and designed the book to highlight certain themes about Jesus. In this video, we're just going to cover the first half of the book. Specifically, Matthew wants to show how Jesus is the continuation and fulfillment of the whole biblical story about God and Israel. That Jesus is the Messiah from the line of David, that he is a new authoritative teacher like Moses, and not only that, Jesus is God with us, or in Hebrew, Emmanuel. 
And Matthew's designed this book with an introduction and then a conclusion. And these act like a frame around five clear sections right here in the center, each of which concludes with a long block of Jesus' teaching. Now this design is very intentional and it's amazing. Just watch how this works. Chapters 1 through 3, they set the stage by attaching Jesus' story right onto the storyline of the Old Testament scriptures. So Matthew opens with a genealogy about Jesus that highlights how he is from the messianic line of the son of David, and he's a son of Abraham. That means he's going to bring God's blessing to all of the nations. After that, we get the famous story about Jesus' birth and how all of the events fulfilled the Old Testament prophetic promises that the nations would come and honor the Messiah, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, but even more than that, Jesus' conception by the Holy Spirit, his name Emmanuel, all these work together to show that Jesus is no mere human. He is God with us. God become human. So you can see two of Matthew's key themes right here in the introduction. He's from the line of David. He's Emmanuel. But Matthew also wants to show how Jesus is a new Moses. So like Moses, Jesus came up out of Egypt He passed through the waters of baptism and he entered into the wilderness for 40 days. And then Jesus goes up onto a mountain to deliver his new teaching. So through all of this, Matthew is claiming that Jesus is the promised greater than Moses figure who's going to deliver Israel from slavery. He's going to give them new divine teaching. He's going to save them from their sins and bring about a new covenant relationship between God and his people. This Moses and Jesus parallel also explains why Matthew has structured the center of the book the way that he did. These five main parts highlight Jesus as a teacher, and he's created a parallel. Jesus as a teacher parallels the five books of Moses. Jesus is the new authoritative covenant teacher who's going to fulfill the storyline of the Torah. Now in the first section, chapters 4 to 7, Jesus steps onto the scene announcing the arrival of God's kingdom. And this is really key. The kingdom is in essence about God's rescue operation for his whole world. And it's taking place through King Jesus. Jesus has come to confront evil, especially spiritual evil, and its whole legacy of demon oppression and disease and death. Jesus has come to restore God's rule and reign over the whole world by creating a new family of people who will follow him, obey his teachings, and live under his rule. So, after Jesus begins healing people and forming a movement, a community, he takes his followers out to a mountain or a hillside, and he delivers his first big block of teaching, traditionally called the Sermon on the Mount. And here Jesus explores what it looks like to follow him and live in God's kingdom. And it's an upside-down kingdom where there are no privileged members. So the poor, the nobodies, the wealthy, the religious, everybody is invited and is called to turn, to repent, and to follow Jesus and join his family. Jesus says that he's not here to set aside the commands of the Torah or the Old Testament. Rather, he's here to fulfill all of that through his life, through his teachings. He's here to transform the hearts of his people so that they can truly love God and love their neighbor, including their enemy. After concluding his great teaching on the kingdom, the next section shows Jesus bringing the kingdom into reality in the day-to-day lives of people. So Matthew's arranged here nine stories about Jesus bringing the power of God's kingdom into the lives of hurting, broken people. There are three groups of three stories, and they're all about people who are sick or have broken bodies or they're in danger, and Jesus heals or saves them by these acts of grace and power. And then right in between these triads, we find two parallel stories about Jesus' call that people should follow him. Matthew's making a point here. One can only experience the power of Jesus' grace by following him and becoming his disciple. Now, after Matthew has shown the power of the kingdom through Jesus, Jesus then extends his reach by sending out the 12 disciples who are going to go do what he's been doing. And this leads to the second large block of teaching, chapter 10. And here, Jesus teaches his disciples how to announce the kingdom and what to expect once they do. Many among Israel are accepting Jesus and his offer of the kingdom, but Israel's leaders, they aren't. They stand to lose a lot if they repent and become disciples of Jesus. And so Jesus knows they're going to reject him and persecute his followers. 
which is exactly what happens. In the next section, chapters 11 through 13, Matthew has collected a group of stories about how people are responding to Jesus and his message, and it's a mixed bag. So some stories are positive. People love Jesus and they think he's the Messiah. Others are more neutral, like John the Baptist, or even the members of Jesus' own family. And they make it clear that Jesus is not what they expected. And then you have Israel's leaders. They're entirely negative. You have the Pharisees and the Bible scholars. They all reject Jesus together. They think he's a false teacher. He's leading the people astray. They think he's blasphemous in these exalted claims he's making about himself. But Jesus isn't surprised or thrown by all these diverse responses. In fact, he focuses on it in the third block of teaching, chapter 13. Here, Matthew's collected together a bunch of Jesus' parables about the kingdom, like about a farmer throwing seed on four types of soil, or about a mustard seed, or a pearl, or buried treasure. These parables are like a commentary on the stories that you've just read in chapters 11 and 12. Some people are accepting Jesus with enthusiasm, others are rejecting him, but God's kingdom is of ultimate value and it will not stop spreading despite all of these obstacles. So, that's the first half of the Gospel according to Matthew. Now here's a few more things to look for as you read through these chapters. Matthew's presenting Jesus, remember, as the continuation and fulfillment of the Old Testament storyline. So, look for how he weaves in quotations from the Old Testament scriptures. And what you'll find is that they're placed at strategic points in the story, explaining more about Jesus and his identity. So stop, take time to go look up these references and read them in their Old Testament context. And most often you'll discover really cool, interesting connections. Lastly, Pay attention to the types of people who accept Jesus and follow him. And you'll see that it's most often people who are unimportant, they're nobodies, or they're irreligious. And these are the people who are transformed by their trust or faith in Jesus and follow him. And it's the religious and the prideful who are offended by him. So how is this tension between Jesus and Israel's leaders going to play itself out? That's what the second half of Matthew is all about.
changes God before time We are a vapor You are eternal Love everlasting Reigning on high Holy, holy Lord God Almighty Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Highest praise is honor and glory Be unto your name Be unto your name Throughout the endless ages You will be crowned with praises, Lord Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again?
on his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. In the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring and lives that Satisfied to look on him and pardon me. 
with Christ my Savior.